Here we go. Those uh, notification sounds in the background usually means I have a device hidden somewhere that I can't find. <laughs> and we are live on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, all of the things with my good friend, Greg Bagby. I'm so excited to have him today as part of our session. Our, our back to school journey today is we're doing five live stream sessions. We started at 8 a.m. on the East Coast, a lot earlier for those on the West Coast. But all of these sessions are being recorded. And we hope that you're getting something out of this that you can directly impact your back to school mantra this year in Canvas and using Instructure Tools. Now, Greg, for those of you that don't know, is the coordinator of instructional technology for Hamilton County Schools. He's in Chattanooga, Tennessee. He was also named EdTech Magazine's 30 K through 12 IT influencers worth a follow in 2020. So if you're on Twitter, it's at Greg Bagby, a fantastic individual. And in his position, Greg works for schools that are one-to-one -one, and he assists them in technology integration into all of their curriculum and a huge Canvas fam, someone that we have been very excited to get to know, whether it would be on the podcast or through our Canvas friends group on Twitter. Uh, we are just so excited to have you today, Greg. Thank you for joining us and tell us all about course settings. Oh, well, thank you, Eddie. I, I, I truly appreciate the invite because, um, well, for one thing, I enjoy working with Canvas, working with teachers, and uh, sharing what I know. I guess that's why I'm in education altogether. And <laughs> today I get the, I get the um, opportunity to share course settings and things that we do. Absolutely. Uh, and, and Gig City, right? Greg, oh, yes. Greg from Gig City. Gig City. <laughs> Fired up. So hopefully the internet will be perfect because I am in Gig City. So uh, we're going to talk about course settings. And of course, I have a course that says working in settings. Um, clicking inside my course and very first thing that, well, <laughs> very first thing uh, that we see, oh, is the home page. Yes. Uh, we're going inside of course settings. And one of the things that I get asked, all the time. How can I change the image in my cards uh, and my course cards on the home page or inside of our dashboard? How do we change those images? Quite simply, once you select settings, it's the very first thing that pops up. Choose image. It's under course detail. This isn't the first thing that I would talk about normally, but this is the question that I get all the time because some folks have just the colored tiles in they want to put in an image. You can upload an image or you can use Unsplash, which actually is one of my favorites. And do a search for specific thing. Yes, uh, the geek in me loves space things and all things uh, cool like space. Uh, so there we go. Quickly just do a search and insert the image. Once again, you can have your own image if that's what you want. Yeah, and it seems still, I think a lot of teachers will probably say, um, well, how important is that image? I think it's super important. I think that you're building, you know, like Don said earlier in the session, you, you build a little bit of personality in a course by uh, kind of the, the image that you select. Um, you can upload a GIF, so you can like download a GIF and then re-upload it here in, in course images, which is fantastic. Yes. Um, it, it definitely, I think, brightens up the dashboard a little bit and gives again that uh, little bit of, as you see, when you go into your dashboard, we're going to see a number of, of uh -huh. pictures here and it helps you as I think it helps teachers kind of yes. figure out what courses, which, especially if you have a number of courses here uh, throughout the year. Yes. And, and it does the same thing for the students. Uh, and one of the things that I've, I've learned as you're building in your, um, your images for your course cards, uh, you can put in gifts, but um, some folks kind of get annoyed with gifts. Yeah. <laughs> most, most of the folks that I work with are adults, and for some reason, they don't appreciate gifts as much as students. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I try to leave them uh, static images for sure, so that they can just have that image and be happy. But yes, most of my course cards, the images are specific as to what they're learning or what's going on. Uh, just because it's easier that way. So back in the settings, that's where we are. Uh, one of the main things inside of settings you will see, you'll see different navigation tabs up top, but 
you also see a uh, list of navigation or tools on the right side. And I think these are very important tools. Don touched on them a little bit um, because inside of your course, you have the opportunity to share the comments. If you miss Don talking about comments, go back and look at it. Comments. I love comments, but you can share all of your course material into comments. Uh, you can look up course statistics. And as you look at the list, yes, you can conclude this course. If it's a manually created course, uh, understand that you have the power to conclude courses and to delete courses. Uh, I have some teachers that have 30 sandbox courses because they keep going, uh, well, I did Kung Fu Panda and now I'm doing Growing with Canvas and they've created all these courses. I say go to settings and use the navigation bar on the right side and delete some of those things. You can even copy and import. These are very, very important as you start the new year. When you're inside of a, a blank shell and you want to import things directly from courses that you've already created, it's inside of settings. These are the things that are inside of settings. And once you do import a course, validate links and content. You got to click this to make sure your links are connected still. This is inside of settings. I know all of this is inside of settings because that's what this is about. But yes, just selecting settings, this allows you to see these things. Current users, hmm, I don't have any students. Oh, yeah, because I just created this course. And that's okay. But once again, this information is available for you inside of settings. Now, getting back to our tabs in the middle of settings, first and foremost, under course detail, uh, course details, we have, of course, the image and the name. So based on how your inst how instructors set up for your district, um, you may have things that are pushed out to you. The name may be pushed out from your SIS as well as different course codes. And it even gets into your sub accounts and the terms and even dates. But um, some of these things are pushed out to you. If you've created manual courses, um, you have a little bit more freedom to do some of the things. Uh, but one of the things that administrators have access to, and this is one thing I use a lot as a Canvas admin, uh, we have blueprint courses. And what blueprint courses are for admin, they could set up a course that has a not just a shell, but they could actually have content within that course and push it out, um, push the same course out to what I do, different schools, so different sub accounts. I create a course and I push out the same course to different sub accounts. I lock down some of the content and I, I allow for them to change some of the dates and other things, but I lock down the things that I need to make sure that stays the same in every course. And the teachers, actually some of the guidance counselors, some of the social workers, depending on which courses I'm sending out, they can customize it for their area. And that's under the blueprint courses and settings for course detail. Once again, you create it at the top and then you can see different sub accounts that have those courses. So in my district, we have about uh, 80 sub accounts. <laughs> so it's one of those things that um, I'm used to working in. You should have only the sub account that you're working in or your school. Uh, but admins, they, they'll have a little bit more flexibility. Another thing that I'm asked about, when I create a manually created course, and also even courses pushed out by your district, uh, there's this little button at the very bottom of your de course details. Don't want to make you uh, get seasick by going up and down so fast, but at the very bottom, if you click more options, there's this little tab that I use a lot. Let students self-enroll by sharing with them a secret whoosh, URL or code. Uh, if you select that, you can actually update your course details. And voila, I think that's French. Um, you have a URL that you could actually give students to enroll into your course. Once again, as a district user and administrator, I use it a lot to get teachers into courses. Uh, it's one of those things where I create manually created courses. And yes, I can go into the people aspect and then drop in emails. But we're looking at settings now. And this is how I do it. 
create that URL, share the URL, and then they're able to enroll in the class all on their own. Yeah. And Greg, we probably have a, a number of people joining us that like, well, people are in there because they're working in their class course or whatever. These are specifically manually created courses that yes. you have the option to turn that specific functionality on. Uh, so think of administrators that want to create a professional development course or uh, like Greg said that when he's got teachers in a course or when he's dealing with the adults in the building um, for any specific course that he might be creating, whether it's a growing with Canvas course or a learning with Canvas course, um, he has the option to be able to just send them this link and then they can self enroll, which means you don't have to go into people. You don't find everybody's email address. We had a question come across the live stream the other day um, where it was like, how do I import people? Well, if it's a manually created course, the best way to do it is here and allow them to do that themselves. And yes, and I have some teachers that uh, they asked about this because they have their clubs and they put different clubs inside of Canvas uh, and they would create their a Canvas course for a specific club and they would use this link so that the students can manually enroll themselves. And this, of course, again, settings under course detail. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go to the next one, which I think is one of the, the second most important thing that you have inside of settings is the set, uh, third tab, navigation. And why I think this is important is because this is going to help the students navigate your course. As you see, I have a long list of things here, and it actually mirrors the navigation inside of the course. In order to change the navigation to see what's what the students can see and what they can't see is to change some of those things up, it simply says drag and drop items to reorder them. So you can actually drag and drop to reorder the items or you can hide them if you drag them all the way to the bottom and it says drag items here to hide. So I can drag things if I have specific textbooks that are being pushed out to my whole school and I don't need those textbooks for my course, actually modules, uh, I can actually drag those items below uh, so that the students don't have to trip up on them when they're navigating. And it'll be a lot cleaner for the students. It'll be a lot cleaner for the students when they see their side. And I'll go ahead and save that. And of course, if you're not aware, the little icon with the eyeball and the slash, that is there because the students cannot see it when they're in their student view because there's no data there. Once there's data there, they'll be able, able to see what's there. But until then, they will not. So navigation, you want to minimize what the students have. I'll jump into the home page real quick. We're going to go back to settings. No worries. So in the student view, I've minimized all the things that were listed so that the students have an easier opportunity to navigate the course. This is done inside of settings. It's in settings, you select that second, no, I'm sorry, the third tab at the top, navigation, and then you can select how you want the students to navigate. Once again, I think this is extremely important to make sure that your students have just what they need. Uh, because if it's too messy, too cluttered, uh, there are lots of things such as Packback. All of our students aren't using Packback. Maybe all of our students are using Nearpod. Uh, the big blue button, hmm, we're not using that. Discovery Education, ah, I don't teach math or science, so I'm not using that. So I can move all of those things to the bottom and that way the students will not have to well, the students will not see them, but if for some reason you have to come back and pull those up, they're always there going inside of settings and navigation, and you can just pull the information back up to the top and drop it in. Make sure you save, and once you save, it'll be in the navigation section on the left side. Yeah, this is also a, a great place that if you are, I know a, a number of elementary teachers ask this question a lot, the navigation can get really overwhelming, right? The Not the global navigation, your blue bar there, the gray bar that we saw earlier that Tammy really dove into, but the actual course navigation, the things yeah. that the right. students see when they dive into the course, 
it can be a bit overwhelming because there are lots of options and lots of choices. Um, I always tell teachers, like if I'm in that specific position, I'm throwing everything in the bottom and then only moving up the things that you know you want your kids to see or they're going to be interacting with. That could that may only be two or three things. It might only be announcements, assignments, and grades, right? Everything else might be down below or modules may be up there as well, depending on how you flow your course. So um, I love that you're diving into kind of the navigation section because it is something that we hear a lot from our educators. And I know when I was coaching, when I talked to elementary teachers, I always said an easy way to kind of clean up that navigation. Now we have Canvas for elementary, which kind of helps a little bit about yes, yes. on that side. But if you're still using the other side and you're not in the Canvas for elementary uh, piece yet, then you can kind of make that simpler, which I love. And Don had a great um, format that he used the navigation for. He had just four items that he would place up inside uh, the navigation. Sadly, um, I guess maybe not sadly, uh, thankfully, with a lot of the work that I've been doing in, the, in my district, um, the teachers and the students have had several things on that and the course navigation so that they can have, of course, their Google Drive. Actually, they don't even need Google Drive anymore. We can just move that. But uh, there are several things that they have used that they want to have in the navigation. Uh, at one point, when we first started, I said, OK, we're going to minimize your navigation. You're going to have your announcements, your assignments, and your discussion modules. And that's it. That's all the, they need. They don't need anything else. But over the couple of years that we've been pushing out Canvas and using it more and more, teachers are like, well, um, I know that you said you, we shouldn't have this, but can we have this and this? And, oh, of course you can. So uh, teachers have slowly added lots and lots of things. Well, not lots and lots. Many more things to their navigation bar because they want to make sure that the students have access. Um, so that's uh, tab number three. I know I'm going out of order, but this is the importance that I think they're in. Sections, uh, as you see, I only have one user, so I can't create a whole lot of sections. But um, what I've seen done here, not only in classrooms inside of the K-12 space, but also in uh, classrooms in higher ed, they create sections for their students so that they'll have them all in the same course, but in different sections. This is done a lot uh, with the counselors and the of the lead teachers when they want to put their groups in sections and of course in classrooms they have sections as well and we can get into a cross listing but uh that's something a little bit different that's a little deeper dive we'll get into that later or someone will get into that i'm sure uh, but that's sections apps i'm always asked about apps because teachers see this button and they want to know what are the apps well <laughs> Apps are actually what they say. They're internal apps that you can put inside of Canvas. They're applications, uh, lots and lots of things that can fit inside of Canvas. As you go through, you can scroll through and search for different tools that you may want to use, some things that you may already use. So I can go up here and say, oh, we use Nearpod in my district. And I do a search, and lo and behold, Nearpod, Nearpod's an app. It's already installed. The district installed it for us. Uh, but Nearpod's an app that we have uh, learning tools interoperability, in case you're wondering what the LTI is for. And what that means is these tools work seamlessly inside of Canvas. Uh, some of the tools will even work with your work inside Canvas such that it allows for grade passback with your SIS. Um, I believe someone else may be talking about grades later, but uh, we love the fact that we can find different apps and different tools inside of this, uh, the app search for external apps, and they work directly inside of Canvas. Uh, things that we, of course, use from Google Drive to Nearpod to Cengage Learning to, uh, there's tons of apps I'm not exactly sure how many are, how many there are, but uh, as you're going through the apps, there's actually not installed uh, or installed. You can see which apps your district has already preloaded for you. My district has preloaded Badger. Of course, we want to make sure that we can give badges, uh, CK12, and 
you see the others discoveries are actual textbook for upper level and that's built inside a canvas yes you can have your textbooks digital textbooks built inside a canvas and it's one of those things that we prefer and then the others you can see and it's just an easy way to get the tools that you're already using inside a canvas so that it will seamlessly work inside of your classroom or inside of your course for your students uh, feature previews uh, for some reason mine didn't load earlier uh, maybe because i've already set up the course uh, but this this gives you toggles where you can turn things on let me go back so my toggles aren't there but that's okay <laughs> um uh, we will figure out where those are but yeah <laughs> yeah super weird right not to yeah. see your not to see your yeah, feature so, previews so, uh so, that's so, not that could be a district it's not a district setting is it no. Greg, you're in charge of that so i would assume that it might I not be <laughs> this morning so yeah when i clicked i was like uh Never mind that tab. That tab yeah, really not good. a huge deal. It happens, right? The internet oh, yeah. can be funky. But I went ahead and put in the a link to um, the Canvas community talking about feature previews and, and what previews are currently available. This is places where um, we can see things like confetti for on-time submissions yeah. and confetti for valid links, those types of things. You can turn those settings in your course off and on. So if you want to dive into those like contents and embedding things, um enabling release notes all that stuff so if you're a google admin or a canvas admin sorry about that you can actually get into this uh, feature preview section and really turn a lot of those in let's see if his yeah go into your admin side and see yeah. on those feature previews if they pop up they might get a there we go hey, hey, hey. Got toggles and, and all that fun <laughs> stuff um and some of these are are set specifically whether you're in a course or whether you're an actual admin but we might have some admins joining us today that are talking about course sections. So yeah, go ahead and uh, go yeah, over a couple of these uh, things. So the confetti for valid links wasn't there uh, in previous iterations, but it is now. Uh, so yes, I turned that one on. Uh, but <laughs> uh, because sure. who doesn't like confetti? Um, and there are several things that you can, like I said, it's a toggle. You can turn on, you can enable, you can lock, uh, or you can disable uh, different things. Yes, this is under the admin settings, but it's also available in course settings, usually, I, I believe. Um, I think I may have done something wrong. I broke Canvas. Uh, <laughs> my bad. Uh, but if so, here's a secret. Shh. If you know your Canvas admin and there are apps that you don't see, they can. Where's our app list? Well, okay, never mind. The secret's not out. Uh, the link's gone. <laughs> My link's gone, but that's okay. Uh, if there's an app that you need that you would like to have installed, uh, what I've learned is a lot of the companies will work with uh, Instructure or Canvas to make sure that the integration works, especially if um, you're a medium-sized district, mid to medium. I guess we're 4,000 teacher strong, 45 students, 45,000 students. I don't know if that's middle or large, small, whatever. Uh, but we, we've been very successful at getting companies to work with us to create links so that we can go directly inside a Canvas. As a matter of fact, one of the, one of the apps that we were using for our ELA, uh, they said they didn't have any integration and they said, we can just put in a link and we said, like, okay, that's not good enough. And then, uh, Lo and behold, uh, three months into our working with them, they have, well, we our developers have come up with this beta app that we want to use inside of Canvas. And if you would test it for us, uh, we'll see how it works. And it it's worked really well. And now they've, that was several months ago. And now it's a full-fledged app. Um, I don't know if you can pull it up inside of here or if it's something that you have to seek them specifically for. Uh, I'm not going to give their names, but it was one of those things where just talking with the representatives and talking with the folks they were able to get their folks on it so that they can build the lti for our needs uh, so don't be afraid to ask companies to work with you especially if you're using canvas uh, there are more and more districts across the globe using canvas as their lms and the more folks that are using it the more companies are willing to work what i found 
are willing to work with it so that you can get things like that placed inside your apps in settings so that yeah i'm i'm glad you brought that up we had a, a comment come in here from facebook from beverly cornish that said we mentioned digital textbooks can be built inside canvas that different to providing a link and i think i was gonna we were gonna talk about it but as you were talking through it i think you pretty much answered that there there are textbook companies that you may have purchased a, a digital version from that interact differently inside canvas um we don't actually know the specifics of the textbook that you might be using but uh, reach out to those folks and say, we yeah. use Canvas. What's the functionality? Do you have, the keyword is LTI. Do you have a, a, a learning tool that I can integrate into Canvas? Um, and there are some textbooks that are very robust. Um, you know, they don't need links. They can actually work with the textbook right inside of Canvas or if there's an yes. activity workbook that's digital. They can also do that inside Canvas. So some textbook companies are very robust. Others might just be, we well, we just need a link to the textbook, right? So um, those questions can be asked and answered by the folks that uh, definitely have sold you the textbook or that you've been in communication with. And um, we'd be more than happy to, to help there. So obviously, Beverly, if you need extra help, just reach out um, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can find the connection. But typically, most of your popular textbook folks are already built in LTIs uh, in the settings app section. So, And I have to admit, uh, there were a couple of... Um, textbook folks that have, uh, they would have a thin Carmen cartridge, uh, geek talk. Uh, yeah. They would have, <laughs> sorry. Uh, they, yeah, uh, they would have a way to get inside a canvas, but it didn't have full functionality. And one of the things that I, I hope that uh, smaller districts can do is pair up with a larger district and just say, that's not good enough. <laughs> because, <laughs> well, uh, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> I'm not sorry. But uh, that's we worked with the group that had a thin karma cartridge, and it, it it worked kind of inside of Canvas. Uh, but we kept leaning on them because we wanted more and more because we wanted to use Canvas as our LMS, and we don't want an LMS that clicks and then takes us to a link to a website to do something completely different. Completely different. Uh, right. They worked with us and they built in an LTI so that. Uh, learning tools interoperability so that it is working directly inside of canvas and we were very 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 thankful for that and once again it's just one of those things where you just have to have a conversation um canvas is exploding throughout the educational world so it's one of those jump on or get left behind i think <laughs> is what some of the companies are seeing so many of them are jumping on and trying to get get with it so that they can pull their um textbooks inside of canvas yeah well you said it i didn't <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so I, i've been I, i've gotten in trouble before when i was doing a uh or a, some some guy caught me after a, a conference i was at and i had done some presentation on i don't even remember but he did a interview with me and i was talking about different tech companies and how they didn't support as well as i thought they should support and I, I didn't realize that tech companies would actually read that and see it, see it online, but I right. got calls from different companies saying, hey, what do you mean? What kind of support are we not giving you? What kind of, and it was like, oh, yeah. So, I, yeah, I did say that. But, um, <laughs> I, but it's one of those things where you got to call it like it is, and they should be willing to help. Education is such a, well, it's the main source of, well, building up all the students around the world. It is our future. Right. <laughs> all of our futures are in the classrooms of today. And we need to do all that we can to make sure that those kids have everything they need to be successful. And if your tool doesn't work inside of where the kids are going, then you need to fix it. Absolutely. So there you go. I love it. I love it. Hey, Sorry. Greg, uh, do you have any, uh, uh, we're almost, uh, we're almost up on time here. So I don't want to keep you. I know that obviously you're also back to school. It's not like, uh, you know, yeah. we're, we're supporting all these folks that are going back and the folks that are presenting today are also going back, which is so exciting. Um, but I know that, you know, you have obviously been gracious on always sharing. Do you want to give folks out there um, you know, if you've got one tip, great, but also, you know, how they can get in contact with you if they, if they just want to reach out and ask a question or two. Um, I know Twitter is kind of the place where we live and communicate uh, a lot. So if you wanted to do that before we go, uh, this is your opportunity. Uh, yes, you could actually reach out to me 99% of the times on Twitter, uh, because that's like you say, that's where, that's where we connected. That's where I've connected with most of the folks that I hang with, uh, at Greg Bagby. And there, yes, anything Canvas or 
instructional tech related, I'm more than happy to help out just because that's why I got into education so I can help others and I'll will, I'm willing to help anyone who needs it. Absolutely. I appreciate that. As always, like, subscribe, uh, forward, whatever you need to do to make sure your folks at your districts get to see this fantastic session over settings. We are extremely excited to be, you know, kind of running an entire back to school top five Canvas classroom tips and tricks. We are so excited to welcome someone uh, that is not, a, we, this is a very, I, I think with like a national stream, we have a lot of people from the States, but this next stream, someone from, uh, England will be joining us. I believe a ah. uh, little bit of a teaser there, uh, building and editing course assignments are our next session at 11 AM Eastern daylight time. And I live in Indiana, so we really don't know what time it is. So if you're confused <laughs> by the conversion between Eastern daylight and Pacific time, I'm sorry. Um, but <laughs> I'm always confused on what time it is in the state. Uh, but I am very excited to be joined um, by another special guest. Obviously, Greg, you did a fantastic job here with settings. Please join us on the next session coming up in about 30 minutes. Have a fantastic day.